So if you go to hunkim.com slash share slash avoid 3.fla, you can download this uh, third part of this super simple avoider game. You can download this uh, flash file, CS6. So when I press control enter, I can see that this game is being changed a bit in the sense that we have a yellow hit test area. So only if you hit if there's a collision between the red box and the yellow area is there a collision so we no longer have that off by one pixel error. I also notice the game is more fun because the blocks are going faster and faster and faster and faster to the point where I might die. So let me just have a little bit of fun here and we're getting pretty fast now and uh, that was a good deco out there. Did you see that? Very impressive. Whoa! This is uh, where I tried... Oh, I died. It says I died there. Okay, I'm not that good. But you can see it's getting pretty fast. Ooh, exciting. What happened? <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the actions layer and take a look at what's new. Let's go to the window actions or F9 and uh, let's see what's new here. So I introduced this uh, idea of enemy speed. It's a variable. I made it a number and I made it 5. So what else is new here? <clears throat> so instead of seeing the, the monster, the movie, uh, movie2.y equals movie2.y plus enemy speed, before it was plus 5, I now uh, made a variable here called enemy speed because I want to change it later on to make the enemy go down faster. So we already talked about this in the past, and let's take a look what's new here. <clears throat> so what we have here is some code that's going to make the game go faster and faster. If stage dot frame rate, this frame rate, by the way, let me just uh, let me if you click on the uh, stage or right click or go to document properties. You should be able to see the frame rate of a stage. It says uh, 24 FPS. That's the standard default. Or if you go to uh, properties, uh, you might see the FPS frames per second over here. Right now I'm at 24 frames per second. This is what we're changing. You can change it dynamically using Action Script 3. So let me go to Window Actions. So this is what we're changing. If the frame rate is less than or equal to 60, Stage that frame rate equals stage that frame rate plus five. So basically, I'm saying that if we haven't quite reached 60 frames per second, we're gonna uh, increase it by five. And in the case where we're uh, greater than 60, then we're just gonna cap it at 60. That's the nature of the if statement. If this is true, we're gonna execute this code here. Else means otherwise. We're gonna execute this code here. The reason why being is a lot of internet browsers and even mobile devices cap out at 60 frames per second depending on the, the context so we'll just say 60 is a is a fair fair uh, number <clears throat> now what if you wanted to go even faster because uh, this game is originally running at 24 frames per second 60 frames per second is barely double the speed of the beginning so if you want it faster then don't make the enemy drop down 5 pixels at a time. Make it drop down 6 pixels at a time, or 7, 8, 9. So that's the idea. If enemy speed is less than or equal to 25, so at a maximum of jumping 25 pixels at a time, just to make sure that we don't miss the collision, if there is a collision to be checked. Enemy speed plus equals 1. This here is the same thing as saying any enemy speed equals enemy speed plus 1. So we're increasing, we're, we're incrementing the enemy speed by positive one. So initially the enemy is going to drop down by five pixels, now become six, and the next time we run it, is the same code is going to be seven, eight, nine, and jumping eight, nine pixels at a time is going to get a lot faster. Otherwise, else, if we're already to the point where we're jumping 25 pixels at a time, we're just going to say, you know what, that's big enough of a jump, we don't want to jump right through the player so that there's no collision whatsoever. Alright, one more juicy item in this tutorial. Let's close this little code here and how did I fix up this collision <coughs> area? I'm going to double click into this movie clip here. Pa pow. 
and what I notice is that within this actual uh, movie clip you see there's a scene I jumped into the movie I actually created another movie clip so if you go to properties we just use the um, a yellow rectangle with no stroke color and what I did here is I actually clicked on it went to properties and once you actually click on it touch it once you should see this color effect the drop down option here I change the alpha to 50% just to show you that if you want to drag it down to 0% that's absolutely fine you can have an invisible hit movie clip area I called it hit and I made it it's a semi transparent just to show that it's actually there you can drag it down to 0% if you wish but it still exists we called it hit now you could have called it booga booga but I called it hit just to show that this is the hit area so essentially I have a movie clip within a movie clip you see in properties this is a movie clip now why in the world would I create a movie clip within a movie clip remember we call this hit and in scene one this movie is called movie one so you can actually reference that inner movie clip by saying movie one dot hit and do we see it in our code let's go to properties sorry we, let's go to the uh, actions F9 so click on frame one window actions and let's look at that beautiful collision code that we changed so let's try to find uh, you can even press control F movie one dot hit so I press control F to find certain codes and that's a really really useful technique so I wrapped it with brackets movie one dot hit this refers to the inner movie if movie one dot hit dot hit test object so this within this bracket this thing is treated as one actual movie if this movie the inner movie dot hit hits the movie two you died so I did change this code as well we're checking to see if the inner movie collides with the monster as opposed to just the movie because we don't want to rip off the player saying oh man I didn't get hit by the bullet it's, so we give them a bit of grace and the fact that our collision uh, area is um, a square as opposed to some complicated shape this is actually computationally a lot more efficient than dealing with uh, pixel perfect uh, complicated shape collision detections All right. Thanks for rating, subscribing, liking. To be continued.